Tom, goal, this is no three games in your last four. You've been down by three goals. I'm sure part of you loves the moxie you've shown in coming back from this. Is that how you look at it? Do you look at it in a, in a larger picture? No, than that? I, I look at tonight's game. I thought we started good. Uh, coming off a West Coast trip, we started really good. A couple of fluky goals. Um, puts us behind the eight ball. Um, I don't think we play a bad first period. Uh, second period, we absolutely dominate. I think we hit six posts throughout the game. I, I give our guys a lot of credit. They just stayed with it. Uh, the only thing we asked them to do is not try, try to do too much uh, and open ourselves up. We have plenty of game left. And uh, uh, I thought our guys kept patience and just kept on banging away. So we, we can... Uh, you know, we can use a little bit of the stuff that's happened before as some experience for us, just to stay with it within our structure and, and just keep on playing. Is that something that you feel that this team has improved upon over the past couple months, that not panicking, uh, not kind of shutting her down at 4-1, even though things yeah. you guys well, were playing were the, maybe the better team at 4-1? I, I, um, I, I, I said to you guys a couple months ago, I'm anxious to see how we handle the situation as we're, we're on the outside, not totally on the outside, because that's when the Metro was losing. Everybody was losing in the Metro, along with us, and we were still in the picture. You, you have an opportunity to stay in the fight. I was anxious to see how our team would react. Our team has reacted very well. You have to. You have to. The coach has to. The media has to. And the people have to give them credit and handle themselves the right way. Uh, and, and, and really playing a lot of important games to keep ourselves alive. And that's what we did tonight. So I, I appreciate that from our group. John, the, just the range of emotion from when you see Wierenski get hit, the fact that he then gets up, then gets back in the game and helps you come back yeah. with a gritty player on the net. Yeah, I, I, I wasn't sure. I, I didn't see it live. I saw it on, on the video. I wasn't sure exactly where it got him. When he walked, when he got up himself and got off the ice, uh, I was encouraged that I think he was going to come back. And uh, very important guy. Uh, forget about if he doesn't play tonight's game. I'm thinking about if he doesn't come back and he's hurt and he can't play the games. Uh, so high marks for him, getting back in it and, and played a, a pretty big role in, in coming back and winning. Seth Jones doing it offensively, but also leadership-wise. Was he the guy again on the bench? Who was keeping the team calm and saying we got time? We can. There wasn't do this any like one was. particular guy. There wasn't really a lot of talking going on, Dave. Uh, we just kept on playing. Uh, everybody said what they needed to say. Uh, I thought Detroit checked better uh, in the third period. Uh, uh, we had such a an emotional and energy filled second period. It looked like we were running out of gas a little bit, uh, but we uh, we get a big goal, uh, uh, and then we find a way and. Uh, so there was, there was no special thing said. It was, it was just staying about our business and, and trying to bang away and, and try to get through because and, and, uh, there was plenty of time. And uh, so, yeah, I, you, you learn some about your team. And these are, these are experiences they can, they, can look, they can draw from, not this, this year, next year, whatever it may be, uh, especially in this league. It, there are so many, so many ways of coming back that you just never could come back before. So you never can give, and our guys have hung in there. Coach, uh, Seth and Artemi have combined so often lately for the primary and secondary assist. Is that just a function of them being trusted in the same on-ice situations, or is there something compatible about their game? No, we, we, when, we're, when we're down, and we, we like to try to play them, uh, that line with Z and Jonesy when we can. Uh, uh, they're just together a lot, uh, together on the power play. And in those crucial situations, they're going to be on the ice. I think I played. I, I think I played about 25 minutes tonight. Um, same thing with Jonesy. Yeah. So they're. Uh, I guess it's it's their responsibility. They're our top players. Uh, uh, they're accepting that responsibility and coming through. So it's good to see. I, I just love Brad's celebration. I'm not sure what the hell it was, but uh, I just loved his celebration. I don't think he knew. What was it? Superman. Superman. Okay. Yeah. We've. Uh... We've, uh, we've talked all season about how uh, the top guys got to lead you, you know, and, and uh, have you, when you look at Dubois, he's got 20 goals now. Yeah. He's a rookie. He's one of those top guys now for you, isn't he? I mean, he's solidly in that mix. Yeah, I mean, he is, uh, we're, we're at, we got two games left. 
we wouldn't have the opportunity to keep on fighting to get in if that doesn't work for us, him in the middle of the ice. Uh, I, I look at that as one of the keys to our season that we're still battling, and I look how the team handled themselves when we had all those injuries. Uh, th those were two very important moments for this club. And uh, yeah, Luke is, uh, uh, he's not afraid of anything. You know, we, he, he has just handled that situation and again, played against the top line tonight. And, and now we're using him killing penalties also. So yeah, he has really grown and been a huge part of us having an opportunity here. John, when you, at the end of games like that, I know it was a four and four, not a three and three. Bjorkstrand misses the net, but yeah. then immediately goes to the corner to make sure that play doesn't start back. Yeah. Is that just a good heads up play by he him? He had a good game, yeah. I, I, that, that, I mean, he had I, he missed the net four times. I think a couple of them were posts, uh, but he was shooting the puck tonight. I thought he was stronger on the puck tonight. It's a big play. It's a great play by Murr, just dumping, just dumping the puck on his, off his backhand uh, uh, into uh, Luke. Uh, just a couple of really big plays there. And you know, I, I wish Murr would shoot it a couple of times. Uh, there was opportunities we could shoot, uh, but he makes a great play at the end of the game, and it starts with Borky, just with his tenacity there. He played good. Borky had a really good game tonight. Panarin has done it in a lot of different ways. Tonight, it seemed like he just said, OK, I'm going to go get this goal. Is that the swagger? Is he kind of your leader in the swag department of, OK, well, I'm, yeah, I'm going to be the guy? He has personality. Yeah. You know, and, and yeah, he, 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 doesn't, uh, he, he, does, he doesn't get too high, doesn't get too low. When he makes a mistake, he doesn't worry about the mistakes. He, he just goes out and tries the same play again, and usually he comes through. So. Uh, when we first got him in our first interview with you guys, what, what does he bring? He's a game breaker. Uh, he, he brings that. Sada was a really good player for us, but Sada doesn't have that dynamic uh, type of style or, or plays in his game that Bread does. And it's something we need. You look at Pittsburgh. Uh, they, they, they win games. They win a couple of cups. They have people that can break a game open at key times. It's, if we're going to have to go through there, if we have the opportunity, we need someone like that, and we do right now. Coach, you're, maybe you could help Panarin. Your celebration seemed to be on point. But you, My, you're, that oh, double. I don't even know what I did, quite honest. I was pretty excited we won the game. Yeah, I was pretty excited we won the game. Um, yeah, I, yeah, well, thank you for letting me know. Yeah, I. <laughs> this franchise has had, has had years where the other team comes back from 4-1 and wins in overtime. You've talked about the difference between believing you can win mm -hmm. and hoping you can win. You're starting to see that with this team where I mean, it doesn't win every game, obviously, but it's now the kind of team that can steal stuff from people when it, it's in the well, crucial Portsy, we, we We've crossed the bridge. I think, I think that's 45 wins for us this year now. We've crossed the bridge of, of just not hoping to win, hoping that we get huge saves out of Bob, which, and Bob had some key saves in the third period. Wasn't busy much before then, but had some key saves in the third period. We've crossed that bridge in, in raising the standard of not hoping to win. A, a big game from this guy and maybe a lucky bounce. It, it's almost like they expect to win now. It, that, that's part of the standard. And uh, that, has to keep on, uh, that has to keep on growing. That has to be more consistent in their thinking. It's there now. They, they've gone through a couple of months here. I think our record, read in the notes today, since mid-February, is third best in the National Hockey League, Nashville and Boston, with two hell of a teams. We're right there with them for a couple of months, for 25 games. So I, I think we've crossed that bridge in, in our swagger, as, as Dave's talking about, in what's to be expected with this team, not hoping. That's a big bridge to cross. We need to stay over on that side. Okay, thank you.